Welcome. My name is Jay Sargas, and this is the first video on teaching and learning. Very simply, we're going to try to take a, a holistic approach to teaching and learning and share a bit about some learning theories and information processing that might be useful to you as a professor. As with any good presentation, we hope that we can offer at least three different learning outcomes. And in those would be the first one after you view this. We hope that you're able to operationalize teaching and learning within the context of your specific discipline. Secondarily, we hope that you can integrate at least one or more of these learning theories into a course redesign. And finally, we hope that you can propose some sort of specific method or step that would allow you to help transfer information from the working memory to the long-term memory, as we'll discuss with the information processing. So what is teaching? Many of us have different ideas about this. I like what Don Finkel says in his Teaching With Your Mouth Shut book. He shares and reminds us what Piaget and Dewey said, basically that no thought, no idea can possibly be conveyed from one person to another. Now this seems a bit odd to most teachers because we, uh, most of us think that's, that's one of our, our major jobs. When in fact he continues to talk about how it's the environment that we create for learning to occur that's essential. Now with that in mind, I recalled Ken Bain indicating in his book what the best college teachers do, and he identified at least four key items that uh, can pertain to teaching. One was that as professionals, teachers know how we learn. Second of all, they create teaching as a serious intellectual endeavor. Third is they're able to create this environment, this diverse environment for very different learners and these learners are able to create and synthesize and analyze and connect their thoughts. Finally, is that he believes that we, as professors, have a formative assessment technique strategy that allows us to check how we're doing as well as check the assessment of our students. So another aspect of this teaching is to ask ourselves, to what extent do we cover as opposed to allowing students to uncover? Do we offer this series of planned gaps between what we know, what they know, and, and the, the puzzle and the roadmap that, that we're walking them through? And are we concerned about how they're connecting these into a conceptual framework of meaning for their further use? I'd like to show a brief video here that we did for our learning laboratory that shows a lot of the different things that we engage our students in. One of the key factors here is you'll see mobility. We like wheels, wheels on the chairs, wheels on the whiteboards. Uh, we like to move and have lots and lots of opportunities for movement around the classroom. Now we can involve that with some technology, some smart boards, some clickers, all types of things that might be included there. But the point here is movement, engagement, and quick uh, and rapid amounts of uh, formative, naturalistic assessment and assistance from the faculty member. So we spoke of teaching. What about learning? I like Schunk's definition of this where he looked at at least three different attributes to occur for successful learning to happen. One would be that there's a change or the change in capacity for behavior. It's a very difficult thing to measure, the whole idea of behaviors. Secondly would be that it's going to endure over time. We hope that it hangs around. It's there for us when we need that. And third and finally, it's going to occur through some sort of practice or experience. Another definition for learning is Driscoll's in 2002, which states that uh, they believe that learning occurs in context, is active, social, and highly reflective. All of this takes place in a dynamic learning environment. So we spoke basically of teaching and of learning, but, but how do you learn? How do we think about learning in the context of our students? I'd like to challenge you for a minute to consider a time when you learned something well. Throwing a ball, tying your shoe, quantum mechanics, whatever it was, what was going on? What was happening? Write down some of those attributes. It could be the context. It could be your teacher. It could be a lot of different things that were happening, hands-on, experiential. Many, many things contribute to when we learn something well. Now I challenge you to do the opposite. What happened when things didn't go well, when you didn't learn things? It was very much frustrating for you to understand those. 
as teachers, this is one of the more difficult things for us to do is to remember back when we didn't know something, especially in the context of what we teach and we know so well. But that's exactly the situation that our students are in. So we talked about teaching and learning, how well we learn, sometimes when we don't. And we probably have boiled that down to their specific methods that allow us to help teach and learn better. Why those methods are important is that they attend to the basic foundation of how we process information. Now this particular model, which I'll go through very briefly, is, was initiated from Atkinson and Schifrin in the early 70s, uh, called a dual memory model. But this particular model starts off uh, in, in the schematic with this whole idea of an input. So you can see that I'm basically the major input. I hope that I'm an input right now for your sensory. And once you see that, you're going to sense that information. You're going to attend to that information. The greater attention that I can command, the greater possibility of this particular coding of the processing to be effective. The key part here is that when we step over to the short-term memory, or the working memory, this is when all, a lot of the heavy lifting is being done. At this point, our students are trying to think about the information that we're sharing with them, think about their situation, and, and connecting that somehow, comparing that to some sort of internal criteria, something that they value. This could be something that they value internally, it could be something that they value externally, such as a grade, but this is where they're going to make the big step in going from the short-term memory, and if it's done well, as I indicate through some teaching methods, there are many of teaching methods, if it's done well, they can make that long step over to the long-term memory. And in the long-term memory, that information is there theoretically forever. Um, upon appropriate cues and prompts, you can see that that information will be recycled and recalled from memory. Now the little uh, arrow there for the teaching methods, that's really very huge. We can think about some of those things. Very simple ideas for the teaching methods such as mnemonic devices. These are the Roy G. Biz, the very low level knowledge memorization. Other ones are like serial positionings, which is when the order in which you learn something, or even chunking. Chunking material in bits of five, plus or minus two is really key. And students can chunk, however, sometimes their management of what to chunk together are a little bit um, confusing. Other more broad terms in this would include um, various ways to process information from short term to long term would be all of our learning theories, things like metacognition, things like um, self-regulation, self-efficacy, constructivism, social cognition, dialectivism. These are all very broad terms, but they allow us to help connect with the students and one way or another walk through. Again, as I mentioned from the very beginning, this is a springboard of ideas. If any of those ideas interest you, there's plenty of ways to, to begin dialogue with uh, colleagues to figure out which one of those work best for you. Now, as we finalize this particular first module, as with the ending of every module, I would really appreciate if you could do three things. This is really more for you than anything else, but at the end of any kind of a lesson, we simply like to have students, all learners, reflect. So if you will, please, Reflect upon what uh, just happened in the past 10 minutes and write a one sentence summary that you believe. And secondly, write one idea, just one, that you might use. One thing that you took from this module that you might use. And the final thing that I'd like you to do is simply write one word that describes how you feel right now. I'd like to thank you again for joining us on this module. My name is Jace Hargis, and I hope that you'll join us for the next four.